Hello everyone, bringing you a video today which forms part two of the review of the Living History UK 24-hour ration reproduction. That's the British 24-hour ration introduced during the Second World War for use essentially by assault troops. And that's what we have here. I must apologise for the delay in this video coming out. Uh, that's because I'd not got any hexi or I'd run out of hexi pretty much. I think I had one tablet left for little hexamin stove which Living History UK also sent over. So preparing the ration, preparing those bits which don't have to be but can be prepared with, with hot water, the meat block and the oatmeal block and the tea. Uh, I, I wanted to review those as well and actually use them. So th that's the reason for the delay is I'd run out of hexi for the stove. So I do apologise for that. The 24 hour ration of course, uh, there were some comments left on the previous video and a couple of points I wanted to talk about just before we get into looking at the contents again. First off was the, the biscuits, uh, which are included in this, which I'm going to try in just a minute. The instructions or the instruction sheet that comes with the reproduction accurately states there should be 10 biscuits and there are actually more than that in the reproduction. I didn't count them out and I should have done. Uh, so that is one thing to say with the, the reproduction is that there are too many biscuits, um, presumably because they are a bit thinner, um, but otherwise they are of a similar shape and size. They, they are not uh, they're the right sort of size. I imagine they're too thin, which means you can stack more of them into the box to fill it out. Uh, but uh, other than that, as I say, the ration, the reproduction is still very, very good. Just to note, there are too many biscuits included with it. One other thing I wanted to mention was the chewing gum, which comes in the ration. And I did pull this up last time, just saying that obviously this is wrapped in cling film. If you wanted to imp improve this somewhat for, for visual, from a visual point of view of, of how it looks, you could easily wrap uh, four pieces of, of chewing gum in cellophane, which is how it should be. You can see the difference there, hopefully. The cellophane, I just cut from, a, I think, the plastic on the top of a packet of fruit. Obviously, you get cellophane wrapping in biscuits and all sorts of things. Jaffa cakes come in clear cellophane now. Uh, all sorts of bits and pieces come in clear cellophane. Boiled sweets in the ration come in clear cellophane. So if you just get a small amount of that, you can even recover it from, from food items you've eaten uh, rather than buying new. And then I've just secured that at the back with a little bit of, of sellotape. Hopefully you can see that okay. And uh, the, there's not too much glare on it from the, from the light here. But that's a slight visual improvement to the ration you could make as well. So those are just two things I wanted to cover at the start here. We're going to launch straight into having a look at some of these items and trying them. Something which was stressed, should be stressed with this, is it's sold for display. It's not sold to be consumed. Uh, the, the food items in here, obviously it is all real food, but it's intended for display. So whether or not you eat this is entirely at your own discretion, your own choice. It isn't sold uh, with the intention that it would be consumed. Things like the meat block and so forth do have a limited uh, shelf life as well. So don't have one of these knocking around for, for more than about a month uh, or two months before you, you, you do consume it if you're going to but that's entirely at your choice. You know, it's, it's not something that's been designed uh, to be necessarily consumed, but I'm gonna have a try of these bits and pieces anyway. I've made that conscious choice. Uh, and the first thing we'll start with is the biscuits, uh, which as I say, there are too many of these and I, I don't believe, I think these are proprietary, which is probably why they're a bit thinner than the specification and therefore more of them fit in the box than, than should do. Uh, I'll, I'll have to ask where these come from originally, but I'll try one of these anyway. I've just realised my Lavillia mic might, might well be pitting, picking up um, chewing sounds which are, are unpleasant so I may have to deal with that in, in editing but very nice. I think a bit they're somewhat sweetened and so forth which I don't believe, well according to the original specification I don't believe they were sweetened at all. So they're quite sweet biscuits, a little bit like a, a very dense rich tea biscuit perhaps. So I'm not sure they're uh, I'm not sure that matches up to the, the specification, certainly in the taste. I think they're sweetened with sugar, which I don't believe does form part of the original uh, specification, the original recipe. But very nice nonetheless. So what else do we have in here? We have the chocolate, of course, that can be, be eaten. I'm not going to bother with the boiled sweets. Everyone knows what boiled sweets taste like and look like, and they are just bog standard boiled sweets. I'm not necessarily going to try everything out of the, the stock cubes for making beef drink again. Everyone knows what, what stock cubes make. They make a, you know, that's not something I need to sort of talk about in the video. So with the chocolate, so there should be two slabs of plain chocolate and two slabs of raisin. It's slightly different wrapping there. I don't know if you can see, so I'm not sure if that's just the way they've been wrapped. I'll ex experiment with these and see. I'll have a look inside, see what we can find in here. That's been closed with double-sided tape, I believe. Hold this up to the camera here so you can see. 
Uh, so we've got some white, you can see there the white oxidation on the chocolate. Break a bit of that off. And this, I think, is the plain chocolate. Hmm. That's very nice. And I think this has actually been done with milk chocolate. Um, I imagine a, a, a modern milk chocolate uh, melted and just molded into the correct size of bar. So I believe that's the plain chocolate there. And we'll see if we do have raisin chocolate in the other, the other bars. Unless I've taken a very small corner off and not got any raisins. Let's see. Or I can see raisins in this, I think. Yep, raisin chocolate. You can see the raisin poking out the corner there. Um, so the problem is getting the distribution of raisins in the chocolate. So I know there's a bit with the raisin in there, so I'll have a bit of this. Mm. So that is plain chocolate. That's dark chocolate, plain chocolate with raisins in. That's very nice. So there we are. We do have both plain and raisin chocolate in the ration, as there should be. Very nice. Let's think what else is in here. Now the oatmeal block, you can eat, um, you can make into a porridge, and you can, but you can eat it um, just as it is as well. Uh, so we'll have a try of one of these. And then in a minute or two, we'll, we'll pop outside and we'll have a, a try of some of these to actually make into porridge and so forth. So there we go, we've got the oatmeal block there. Now, you can see here, this looks like it may be one of the Quakers ones, which we've discussed in a previous video talking about. Uh, it was one of the Derwent Dam marches. And uh, Ramsey mentioned that Quakers produce an oatmeal block or a, an oatmeal square which is, is similar to the oatmeal block and could be cut down. I think that's what these are, looking at them. It is. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty certain, or something similar anyway. So that's the oatmeal block you get in the ration. Mm. And very nice, of course, because it will be. So I think in some instances, obviously with the biscuits, with these, it's of modern proprietary food. You can just buy off the shelf. Um, and, and, and use obviously as a stand-in, uh, but works very well. So we'll have a, have a go with the rest of this, I think, rather than opening up the other one and uh, try and make some porridge with it. And obviously we'll be having a look at the meat block and trying to make some, some of the sort of broth you get with that when you cook it up. And also the tea as well, the instant tea, the tea cubes. So that's what we're going to have a look at now. We'll get the Hexamine stove fired up, which obviously is the, the little folding stove folds out with three veins like that, as you can see, and then a little disc just slots, slots in the middle there. So we will have a go with this. You're really supposed to dig these in into a little hole in the ground to give a bit of a wind break. I won't be able to do that. So hopefully it'll be efficient enough to boil up some water and we can have a look at these uh, other bits of the ration now. So we've come out to the back garden. Uh, hopefully there won't be too much interfering noise and so forth. Hopefully the lab mic won't pitch, pick too much up. And what we're going to have a look at now, of course, is the meat block, the oatmeal, and the tea. We can prepare these using a mess tin and the, the little hexi stove here, which I've mentioned, which is also from Living History UK. Uh, this is the folding stove, which was issued alongside the 24-hour ration for use by troops in, in the initial assault until better rations could be brought up. So it gives some self-sufficiency in the first instance. So, first of all, we'll have a look at the meat block. We're going to open this up and have a look at the contents of this and then we'll break it up into the mess tin and prepare it with some water, which is the preferred way of eating this. You can eat it as it is, you can nibble at it. Uh, the instructions specifically say to eat it slowly and to drink plenty of water because it is dehydrated, obviously, and it's very salty and it will obviously require a lot of water to help you digest it. But as I say, well, what we're gonna do here is prepare it with some water in the mess tin. We'll have a look at this now. We'll get this opened up first of all. look at what we've got in here and wrapped in cling film inside there as you can see so we've got this uh, wax paper or, or a plastic film on that side and then we've got the meat block wrapped in cling film inside and looking at this it looks very similar to the one which Ramsey made according, according to the 
uh, specification, the proper specification. So you can see it's very much de dehydrated. You can see the fat and so forth in there, but you have these little dried chunks of, of meat in there, as you can see. So this needs to be broken up in the mess tin, which we'll do now. Crumbled into the mess tin. Break that up as much as possible. A messy job. Okay, there we go. And then the instructions say to add a half inch of water to the mess tin, so we're going to do that now. Cooking with rifleman more. And what are we doing there on the level? Not too far off there. So we've got that swimming around in there. There may be a little bit too much water, but we'll see how we get on. And then we need to light the hexi. So I'll get this set up on the hexi stove. It's not the best fit, the square block on the uh, on the reproduction stove here. Obviously they are designed to work with round hexi blocks, but you can't get those these days. Moves a bit more central into the frame of the camera here. Try and get this lit. The idea of these stoves originally was you'd, you'd dig them in so that there'd be a windbreak. There we go. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. Come around this side. The idea of these stoves originally was that the, you'd dig them in and that would provide something of a, a windbreak. Um, and, and that is the intention of these. Uh, you would you would normally dig them in, but I don't have the the opportunity to do that, unfortunately. So hopefully, light it at both corners if possible. That is going. We've got the hexi lit there, and we'll get this over over the hexi, and we'll come back to that in a little bit once it's boiling. The wonderful smell of hexi. So you may be able to see this is beginning to steam now, it's beginning to come to the boil. I'm just going to break this up a little bit further now that there's a bit of moisture in it. Just break the blocks up a little bit more into the, the liquid here. Get that back on the stove there. And once it's up to the boil, it needs to boil for three to four minutes uh, just to make sure it's all broken down properly. Um, so we'll come back to it again in a minute or two once this has uh, been boiling for the appropriate amount of time. So you can see this is boiling away quite nicely now. I think I did put a little bit too much water in here, uh, but that's that's okay. Uh, it's supposed to make a sort of broth like this, as you can see. We're getting a nice foam on the top there, which looks very appetising. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so this is this is what the meat block looks like when it's cooked up. It's just it's quite th well. It's a sort of gravy with these granules still in it, uh, which are the, obviously the dehydrated meat. So I think we're just about there with this. Uh, unfortunately, as I say, with this not being dug in, not having a windbreak, I did look around to see if I had some spare bricks or something I could I'd put around it, but I didn't have any, unfortunately. It keeps coming on and off the boil, obviously, as the, the flames, uh, as, as the wind picks up and goes down again. So uh, I will, uh, I'll have a try of this, though. I think we're, we're just about there with this now. Um, Let's see where we get to. I'm going to need a new hexi block for the next bit. Just to uh, to show, I think we've, we've had a close-up of this already. But um, mm. that is much as the much as the meat block was that we prepared previously in a previous video, looking at the 24-hour ration. Very salty. You do get the meat taste coming through. The little chunks of meat which are in there, almost like mince, do soften up when uh, boiled up like this. And it's a essentially a, a very salty meat broth, I suppose you could say. It's making my mouth water because of the amount of salt. But uh, yeah, that's the meat block and it, it's cooked up as it should do. Um, yeah, it's uh, worked exactly as it should do with the water there. I think I'd say I put a little bit too much water in. But other than that, that's... Uh, as it should be, which is very, very salty. Um, you wouldn't want to eat much of that. And of course, the idea of the ration is you don't live on this for very long. 
that's the meat block. We'll move on now to have a look at the oatmeal block and prepare one of those. And as it so happens, we've just burned out of Hexi, which is which is very a very good timing, really. So uh, we'll see how we get on with the next one with the uh, the oatmeal block. So it's exactly the same principle with the oatmeal block. You get these, both of them. I've already had a little nibble off this one, but not much, so should be okay. And just break them up into little bits in the mess tin. Oop, dropped a little bit there. Get back in there. Get the other one. that up as well and then the principle is exactly the same get some water on this get that boiling uh, and you make a porridge basically so I'll say I'll add some water to this get this broken up I'll add some water to this and we'll come back and have a look in a minute or two once it's on the boil so I've been slightly more frugal with the water this time uh, I, I did put too much in last time I think um, so hopefully this will uh, boil up a little bit more quickly you can see it's starting to steam already uh, we'll come back in a minute or two once we've got a, a rolling boil on the go and as I say this this will make a porridge uh, once it's been uh, boiling for a little bit so uh, yeah looking forward to this one I know remember from trying this previously the reproduction Ramsey made the the oatmeal was by far the best bit of the whole lot it made a very nice porridge so we'll uh, come back in just a minute once this has been on the boil for uh, long enough to make the porridge so you can see this is thickened up quite nicely we've got a, a porridge in there now so I'm gonna have a try of this and see see what we think of it right so I've still got a bit of hexy going as well for the the next brew or possibly enough to light another block anyway we'll have a try of this hmm that is really really good very very nice <laughs> I knew this was going to be the best bit so you can see in there it's really thickened up nicely into a porridge mmm that's delicious very very good right so we'll have a, a try of the tea blocks next so that's the next thing to do is to try try the tea so I've got another half block here, I'm just going to add that onto the stove if I can. Fiddly job. Just touch it right at the edges, there we go. Get that on there. Right, that should do the job. A little bit rickety this stove, um, I have to say, compared to just compared to another reproduction I have. I've not experimented with it with an original to compare at some point, but it I the obviously as I said before, the idea of these is you are supposed to dig them into a hole in the ground to give them some wind protection and that would also make it a bit more rigid if you could stick it into the soil a little bit but as it is just set up like this it's quite rickety so I've had to be quite careful with it um, but it's doing the job so right next thing as I say is the tea I'll open this up and again these are wrapped in, in cling film inside I'm supposed to use two of these uh, you can see there's tea and sugar and sweetened milk powder in these so just break these up in here to, to aid in uh, in the process You're supposed to add it was a half inch of water to the the meat block and the porridge the uh, the oatmeal block to make the porridge this is a full inch so I will uh, get some water on here get it boiling and come back and have a look in just a minute once it's uh, on the boil I'm gonna have to stoke up the the hexi stove again uh, unfortunately the camera died part way through so I'll have to uh, I've ended up burning a hexi block for no purpose there, so I'll have to put another one on. We'll get this on the boil and come back and have a look in just a minute. So I'm not sure I'm going to achieve a rolling boil here, but we've got something approximating tea in here, and you can see all the leaves in there. The tablets are supposed to be made of compressed uh, dust, tea dust basically, rather than actual leaves. Uh, but this is this is brewed up quite well. Um, I'll have a try of this now and just see see what I think of it. It's going to be very hot, so I'm going to be careful taking a sip of this, but. Uh, Right, so to allow this to cool a little bit, I'm going to pour some into a mug. I'll also hopefully avoid too many leaves this way as well. It certainly looks like tea, so we'll have a have a try of this. 
that's very very nice extremely sweet as was to be expected it is heavily sweetened but uh, that's nice and you can hopefully see in there it's a proper cup of tea uh, it tastes like tea uh, well, it tastes mainly like sugar actually but that's what it should taste like that's very nice I'm gonna let that cool a bit and finish that off so that's a run through the the sort of uh, contents of the 24 hour ration pack that uh, you'll cook using the repro stove from living history uk as well that's the tea obviously we've had a look at the uh the tea there the meat block and the oatmeal block as well cooked up into porridge so that was very nice indeed and they all worked as they should do uh, as part of this ration so hopefully it's been interesting running through that and hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what you get in the ration and how you can prepare them in the field and as i say the hexi stove would be a lot more effective if it was possible to dig it into a little hole in the ground which is really how it's intended to be used so there we are i hope you found it interesting looking at that i've certainly been impressed with with going through these items obviously the fact you've got the raisin chocolate in there is rather nice uh, the meat block worked very well as did the oatmeal block as i say i think that's one of the quaker um, square oatmeal blocks you can get or something similar to that but it works very well as a, a way of sort of replicating the contents of the ration still very impressed with this as i say mentioning the, the number of biscuits and obviously if you can improve it a little bit maybe rewrap the chewing gum in some cellophane rather than cling film small little bits like that just to to obviously improve this you can of course make your own biscuits the the recipe is out there uh, i will put a, that in a comment down below uh, pinned comment down below all being well if you did want to replace the biscuits with something made to the original specification and, and about the right size that's something you could do as well but if you're planning to consume the item as i say that's entirely at your own discretion if you're planning to i think the biscuits inside if you're just looking to get something off the shelf uh, obviously fulfills the role very well you're just living with the fact that it that the contents aren't exactly as they were but nevertheless i would maintain that i, I think this is the, the best reproduction of the 24-hour ration on the market certainly it's streets ahead of the the earlier examples which came out of the us which used tin products and so forth in there to to replicate or to, to replace the meat block rather as i say hopefully you found it interesting looking at this and it hopefully has been useful in deciding whether or not to purchase these i know they were out of stock just before christmas hopefully they'll be back in stock soon if they aren't already and as i say they're worth picking an example up for display if nothing else and as i say i've i've been very impressed with this overall and it's been fun today uh, cooking up various bits and pieces from it and, and trying the contents so hopefully as i say it's been of use if you found this useful and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed please do make sure you hit the little bell little notification button down below and that will of course alert you when i upload future videos if you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel you can both patreon and paypal are linked down below and as ever a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods is greatly appreciated as i always say if you'd like to follow the channel on social media you can facebook instagram and twitter are all linked down below and if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media there is of course an email address down there as well that's everything for this video so until next time bye for now